Well, here we are again at the end of the week, and uh, wow, it's it's good to be here. It's good to uh, have made it to the end of the week. And as always, here with us is the host of This Week Again, Suzanne Posel. Suzanne, how are you doing this week? I am doing very well. How about you? I'm doing pretty well, in, in spite of the uh, fact that inflation is going right back <laughs> up again. Uh, you know, I, I, I went to, look, I know it varies from place to place, so the, the, maybe the numbers aren't relatable. I, you know, frankly, I think gas anywhere in the United States is, is unrelatable. But at, at the be- you know how they say March comes in like a lion and uh, goes out like a lamb? That was sort of gas prices for me because I, I filled up towards the beginning of the month. And um, I, I must say, I'm a Costco member. I, I try to get the gas prices as low as I possibly can. And at the beginning of the month, I paid three oh nine a gallon. And the last time I filled up there, like in the last few days, it was three seventy five a gallon. And gosh, I, you know, I'm sure they have all sorts of explanations as they usually do about oh my my goodness, like this refinery is offline, and that uh, you know, and there's been supply issues and yada yada. It just seems like they they always seem to raise the rates of gasoline prices right when they know we're actually going to start driving when the weather gets nice it's just kind of a funny coincidence i've (laughs) noticed over the years it's kind of funny yeah and apparently one state up because i'm a you know one state up from you Mm -hmm. that's worth another dollar fifty to 250 depending on where you go so yeah i i was happy when it came down to you know under five dollars (laughs) <laughs> but now <laughs> I know, right? I remember back in like the nineties yeah. when gas became a dollar fifty and yeah. I was, you know, in the southeast uh part of the country that I don't like to talk about <laughs> because it's an embarrassment. Um and why can't we just you know, it's a peninsula, it's almost out of the state the country anyway. You know, just get rid of it. You know, you know, you know that B- Bugs Bunny cartoon. I, I forget what, you know, but it's now become like famous, you know, in memes online where he's like sawing off the whole state of Florida and just like pushing it into the <laughs> Gulf of Mexico. I, I think that's so wonderful. Having lived there for a year, I absolutely endorse that in every possible way. So I remember my mother screaming, we're never driving again when the price went to a dollar fifty. Yeah. Just we're not we're not driving anymore. Mm hmm. Now I'm happy, like I said, if it gets under five dollars. Isn't it crazy? And you know what drives me nuts is that under Biden, I know that right now we're in an election year and you know, he did sign a huge climate change uh um part of the infrastructure package that would that would push us forward. Absolutely. Thank you, whatever. But under his administration, we have drilled more than the predecessor. Yes. Yeah. And so and I know that it goes to the global supply and not the individual supply. Like, I don't know why we can't just siphon. There's there's a line coming from Alaska right through my state. Why can't we just stick a little like, I don't know, a straw or something in there and just (laughs) siphon somehow? (laughs) Lower the price because I don't want to have to pay for it to go all the way down and and then be hauled all the way back up. And I think that's what the extra dollar fifty. Yeah. Between you and I is about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're shipping it all over the place. And, you know, I, it's it's kind of weird because I know that, like, it, I, it's it's so weird the way they determine prices. I've, I've, I've never understood it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, down in the Bay Area where where my uh, my you know parents live, um, it's it's a dollar more expensive, uh, you know. And, and I know my dad shops for the cheapest gas. He, he, he'll drive miles out of his way in order to, to, uh, to get it. And uh, so it's, you, you would think, you would think that, you know, okay, there's a, a refinery in Richmond, California, you know, right by the San Francisco Bay. And it's easy to get there. And you know, right there, okay, so like uh, that would be cheaper there. No, no, it's a dollar cheaper where I am. And like up, up near you, I assume there are refineries, you know, in, 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 the, in western uh, Washington State. 
Um, yeah, what else could be out there? The tumbleweeds. <laughs> I mean, nothing's going on in Yakima. Nobody cares. <laughs> but so if there's there's oil and you know, there's you know shipping and, and and stuff like that. You think okay, it's right there, but no, no, no. They charge what the market can bear, and they know that they're people who have you know you know mon- money in the Seattle area, and they know that they're people who have money in the in the San Francisco area, and they charge what they absolutely know they can get away with, and then like. When they know not as many people are going to drive, they ease back a bit, but not as much as they used to, and they just keep pushing it and pushing it as far as they possibly can. And we'll just we'll just have to see how far they think they can get away with it. And it it will it will be, you know, an interesting thing to watch. And I mean, interesting in the old Chinese curse sense, um, to, <laughs> to to see how it turns out and and what social repercussions of it, because I think that really is the the, the crux of politics and 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 conflict in America. You know, we can we can pretend as the right wing says that that politics is is downstream of uh of culture, but uh really uh, uh politics is downstream of economics. And if you can't pay for gas in a country which has like no infrastructure that would uh, allow you to do anything else, you're going to end up in big trouble. And you know, we ship all of our food in big trucks that operate on on gasoline, and so bread is going up, and eggs, and cheese, and all the other things that that that, that people eat, and so we're we're experiencing all of that at the same time, and eventually, stuff is going to happen, and I just wonder when that's going to be because it just keeps getting worse and worse. You know. Uh... My husband and I were talking about this kind of thing the other day. Like, what is going to be the breaking point? Yeah. And he is wondering, he thinks it would be a really great idea because we're funding all of this. Yeah. Um, That on April 16th, mm. as many people as possible go and fill out uh, their tax information with their employer again and hit exempt. Yeah. Yeah. And for the next tax season, everybody's exempt because we're not going to fund this. We don't agree with what you're doing. We don't agree with how you're voting. We yeah. don't agree with where you're putting the money. Mm-hmm. And we see that you are not interested in helping us solve the problems. You're not yeah. interested in helping the housing crisis. You're not interested in helping the economic crisis. You're not interested in helping with um, with prices. You're not interested in helping any of the actual issues and we are being priced out of at some point civility. Yeah. We we can't afford to yes. buy a home. We are not going to be able to afford to rent a home. We can't afford the utilities and everything that we put in the home. We can't afford to eat out. We can't afford to buy groceries. And now, you know, with prices going up just because it's a holiday, yeah. like uh, at some point, so my husband yeah. and I were talking about yeah. this and he's like, what if on April 16th, everyone who files their taxes fills out that form again and just hits exempt? Yeah. And for the next tax year, we're all exempt and we're not paying our taxes because we don't support what you're doing with the money. Yeah. I mean, that kind of is the process. I mean, it's a little bit more elaborate because they have legions of uh, you know, tax uh, attorneys and accountants and so forth. They do. The and a lot of people go through, might. They essentially just hit exempt. Yeah. They do it. Why not us? Well, it, it would mean that people would have to, you know, think this all the way through. Yeah. Don't just, hey, it's a yeah. great idea. Think it yeah. all the way through. You yeah. might be putting yourself in jeopardy to do this. Yeah. The idea is if a third of the country does it or more, yeah. I, I say two thirds, we would need two thirds of yeah. the working class people to do it. But That's... if they were all willing to do it all at once, yeah. They don't with all the de- with all the defunding that the Republicans have been doing to the IRS and they just got an influx of money, they physically don't have the the personnel to go after two thirds of the country. That's and true. it would be a huge uh um message to them that look, you only listen when your pocketbook is in jeopardy. So, okay, yeah. 
We don't like the course of this country. We don't like the way you're taking things and how you're handling things. And your inactions are are costing us, literally putting us homeless and, and hungry. So we're not going to fund this government anymore. Now, I'm not advocating this. This was an idea. It's but I do kind of like it. But again, it's unreasonable because how can you get two thirds of the country to agree on anything? That you know, it, that is a really fascinating idea, and I, I've I have like spent some time thinking about how in in a nation like this, like the United States of America, that is is so big and whose population is so diffuse that doesn't have a uh, you know a Paris or a London or a Tahir Square to uh, to shut down in terms of uh, filling the streets. Although I know people try that too, and God God bless them. That doesn't seem to uh, have been effective. And I've heard people from time to time talk about the idea of a general strike. And of course, you know, 12, 13 years ago, there was there was Occupy Wall Street. And none of that has come to fruition so far. I like this idea. This is something that, that everybody essentially is connected to in one way or another. And at a time where, when we're sending, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, of of weapons to Israel for uh, for people to be slaughtered, and and in this country, there's hundreds of billions of dollars that's that are being extracted from from the people, uh, you know, like. In in this the slow motion process of 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 starving them to death and and making them homeless so that a, a few billionaires can put a few extra feet on their mega yachts, that seems like to me an entirely appropriate response. And that is that is that is something that yeah. I, I I would want to explore. I I I wonder if other people have have thought thought along similar lines. I'm sure they've thought about that on on similar lines. And and perhaps are are organizing towards something like that. That that seems like a really compelling and appropriate response to me. Yeah, for example, and everybody listening can probably understand this, um, or at least empathize with it. We have forty four percent of single family homes being purchased by private equity firms as of last year. BlackRock, yeah. Okay, not just them. Private equity firms in general. BlackRock for sure has taken for the sure. the lion's share, but there are other firms too. Yeah. We yeah. have to not just go after one guy. We got to go after the entire yeah. thing. It's a hydra. Yeah. And at the same time, infrastructure um, money going toward new housing in some areas like um, Arizona. They are building an entire neighborhood of single family home rentals that will never be able to be purchased. Yeah. So, Jeez. so again, here we go. Yes. In absolutely. addition to that, do they even have any water left down there? My God. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're drying out the Colorado river, but here we go again. We have a good thing that is being used for nefarious purposes because the yeah. people in power are interested in lining their pocketbooks. And in order to get these contracts, a lot of people are willing to part with some money that the people who are willing to take that think is a, is a cash day for them. And yeah. it, what the ramifications are is there will be neighborhoods, complete neighborhoods of single family homes that will never be able to be purchased. Yeah. And without caps on rent, without a federal or, or on state levels, that is a recipe for homelessness. Yeah. So we can't, we have to, we have to do something that will catch their attention. That and unfortunately yeah. these people only listen to money mm -hmm. because when they go into office, they're always broke ass bitches mm -hmm. and a year or two into office, you know, all of a sudden they have a couple million dollars in the bank and they're still, you know, driving a minivan and talking about how there's a single mother just trying to be a Congresswoman. I'm talking about you, Katie Porter. I love your whiteboard, but yeah. how did you get all that money when you yeah. make 174,000 a year? Yeah. So listen, it is everyone and it is a problem, but the kicking it down the can that our boomer parents did in the eighties yeah. is now hitting us. And yeah. the future of that is 
we have nowhere to live, we can't afford to eat, and we're still expected to show up to work on time. Yeah, no, and and, and we can't. It, it, it has to come to a point where there's going to be a conflict and and a confrontation, and and I am I'm truly praying because <laughs> because you know it's it, it's not all like the French Revolution. 